let's try again. Hi, this is Johnny Bergen with another Chicago blues guitar lesson. Maybe some of you blues heads out there might have recognized that. It's kind of like You Don't Love Me, right? But it's actually Bo Diddley's She's Fine, She's Mine. And that's why You Don't Love Me really kind of got, wasn't the huge hit that it could have been. I'm talking about You Don't Love Me, actually titled on 45 You Don't Love by Willie Cobbs. And, uh, of course, we all know that that song went on to be recorded by everyone, everyone, everyone. Allman Brothers, Smokey Wilson, R.L. Burnside, you name it. I mean, you can't go hear a blues bar band pretty much without hearing it. I think the best cover is Magic Sam's, and that's what we're going to be getting to. But first, I wanted to start with the original group, which was Billy Boy Arnold. I mean, excuse me, which was... Bo Diddley with Billy Boy Arnold on harp and all that great percussion and the claves and everything. It's the same basic theme. You could play it in A down here, but it makes a lot more sense with the capo on the A position here. Because it's got this chord for four, ah, 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 ah. which is also Robert Nighthawk uses that chord, and we talked about that in an earlier lesson on Robert Nighthawk. Eddie Taylor uses that chord. I'm gonna just talk about it again, real quick, because it sounds so good. It's fourth fret up from the capo, A string, second fret up from the capo, D string, and open on the G string, and then he just uses your typical five bar chord. Doo -doo. If you really want to rock, you can just grab a shaker and just hold the shaker in your hand while you... So anyway, that song is a lot of fun. It just crackles with energy, and I can totally see how Willie Cobbs may have been inspired by that song. Now, you know, I mean, in a blues world where, like, Clifton Chenier took... Last night I lost the best friend I ever had, did the same music with an accordion and said, yesterday I lost the best friend I ever had. I mean, it's almost kind of splitting hairs because it has a completely different uh, vibe and feel and different lyrics. But anyway, it was just deemed to be too close to that Bo Diddley song by some of the powers that be. And so now I'm gonna talk about the Willie Cobbs version. I've got my bad monkey on and my high up my gain up just a little bit because I'm playing in a hotel. I can't really uh, tear it up here. This is also an A. You can play it down here. You can play it up here. And this song has kind of a frickin' frack thing where sometimes it ends on the high one, then it ends on the low. That's ending it on the high A string. Let's turn the tremolo off now. Or you could do it here. The advantage of learning it here is you can play this in any key with anybody here. You're not stuck there, right? I really like that rhythm a lot. I'm using these small chords, not the whole thing. That doesn't sound as good as this here. kind of clips along just like that it's a neat drum beat do 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 bat do 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 bat it's kind of it's like a strange drum beat you know um so you have your it's just the bottom of this chord or this chord the last three strings of it the a string d string g string on a v shape you 
know, I've got a real free stroke, and I'm just muting it by what I call kind of squeezing your hand, squeezing the ball, kind of. It's like if you had a tennis ball like that. That's how you control your sound. Now, that wasn't exactly in the record, but, you know, if you can play the melody, you can play this solo. So now I'm going to go through a little bit of the solo. I guess I'll turn up a little bit. Hopefully it won't get thrown out of here. Okay. Notice how there's, you're playing one, you're picking it once and getting two notes out of it. Bend it, then unbend it. And now try this. Now move your hand to put your second finger on the fifth fret. And try sliding into these notes in a real assertive way. Let's try that again. That's sort of a double hammer on. Because he's singing it. It doesn't want to sound like you're reciting it or like reading a, you know, a laundry list, you know, a shopping list or something. It sounds like you're really saying it, you know. We didn't really talk about that. Let me just talk about it. Everything's on the fifth and seventh fret, starting this fifth fret of your A string, fifth fret D string. Then you got to roll. If you can do that, you're halfway there. Then you got to reach out with your third finger or your pinky, and then put your third finger up. Your pinky's on the eighth fret of the E string. So that's like if you're breaking it, if you're chunking it up, right? Now reach with your third finger up D string. Or pinky out. That's ending it with the high A, that's here's ending it with the low A. Here's a roll. Here. Other position. That's just Move back one fret and in. Back one fret. Here you go. Back to where you were. Ah. It works. Sounds like, yeah, he told her, right? Or it sounds like, that sounded very vocal. You're, you're just drawn into like a little story, you know? So. And he does that twice and then So that's just right out of your E chord. It's ninth and seventh. And now we're back to the four going to the one. And then you have, just play right out of your one chord and your seventh to fifth fret up here. Seventh fret, D string, fifth fret, G string, 
Then do a bend. Use your third finger and get your second finger behind it to push it up. Then your first finger, just pop that on the fifth fret of the E string. Here's what you did. And now we're going to get out of it. We're going to do the same thing backwards and go back where we came from. Almost. You're going to bend it up, let it down. Yeah. So the simplicity of the storytelling is super effective. And that's what made this song so catchy and such a classic. And the vocals sound great. His voice is great. He's a great blues man, and I really like his other singles. In fact, there's one called, what, Pretty Little Girl or something? It's so weird. I'm not crazy about the production on it. It's, it's trying to be like three things at once. But he takes this whole riff and makes it major. Something really... I don't know, man. But um, anyway, this song can go so many different ways because they played it in such a simple and strong and direct way. All right, now let's talk about the Magic Sam version on Black Magic, which you've been waiting for here. So this is basically faster, more reverb, and in higher key, okay? Magic Sam style. And he plays a little more notes. It's not this stuff with all the space. <laughs> where it just sits there and you get the power of it that way. This is more... You might hear... You don't love me, yes I know. You can even go... Yeah. Sorry, he didn't do that. So his, his real riff is a little bit different, isn't it? It actually feels pretty good just doing your thumb, down and up, down and up, and down and up. You can play with a pick if you want to. I will give you. He actually goes. He actually does it. If you love me, baby. Actually, we'll sometimes even throw that in there. You can barely hear it, but it's there sometimes. And so let's talk about, that's the approach, just real loose with your right hand. throw that in there um, for extra credit. Now let's talk about his solo. He does some hip things on his solo. He likes those first finger bends, right? So far we're like the record, right? You Sometimes you'll hear this note. Back down to the fifth fret. And then some, this little, this is another one of his little hooks. Love it. I'm doing it again real slow. That's just uh, six and eight and six on the G and B strings. Now try this. Don't do this. Don't make it too major on the way down. And 
And then you get the good vibrato. A real stinging one. Here's how you do that one, okay? You gotta put it where you want to and then scratch the mosquito. And then he just scratches the mosquito up there. That's the seventh note. And then he goes. So. Something really close to that. And then you gotta go, you always gotta be somewhere in this song. And then the greatest ending of all time. So then the ending, he's just doing that riff. And singing, you know, just incredibly. So if you could look, just try to make that riff like automatic and then put everything in your singing. And then... That's basically it. You could do this chord... It almost sounds like he misses one of the chords here, but that's what it is. If you're wondering what those are, you could just use the ninth chord, C ninth, B ninth, B flat ninth, or the that chord, which is kind of the Magic Sam version of a ninth chord. You got the V on the bottom, and then your pinky on the B string. That song is in a teardrop by Magic Slim, it turns up all the time. Anyway, three versions of a great song. There's lots and lots and lots more. The Smokey Wilson one is really killer. Um, have fun. Let me know um, if you have any Willie Cobb stories. Um, please let me know. He's made a lot of good records like that. You've got 29 days to pay or you go to jail or something. Um, that's a great one. Um, He's got some rec a record that Johnny Rawls produced. Um, he made great music uh, right up until the end. And of course, the Magic Sam one is a classic. So uh, have fun playing this song. Do subscribe to my YouTube channel and see you next time.